Hey, so by now you've probably seen that viral TikTok thing where they put a block of feta in the fridge and make this amazingly delicious creamy pasta with some tomatoes and veggies and stuff like that. So I decided to try to recreate a vegan version of it last night for dinner and it was insanely delicious. So I decided to uh, share with you the recipe I used to veganize the uh, TikTok baked feta pasta. Good thing about this recipe is it's easy, it's fast, it's like a good way to use extra veggies. It's kind of like a one pot, like a one pot meal sort of. So let's get into making your very own baked feta pasta, but vegan and gluten free. Hey, if you're new here, my name is AJ. I make vegan recipes that are easy, delicious, and good enough that even omnivores would love them. If that's something you're into, hitting a like, it's free, takes one second, and really helps the channel out. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you mush it, but either way, I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so step one, you gotta get some pasta. I think it looks cutest with the bow ties, you know? Um, and I'll put the full recipe in the description below, by the way, but yeah, I think it looks cutest with the bow ties. Do whatever you want, though. Follow your bliss, not mine. Um, and so I've got a pot of water boiling. So while that's boiling, I'm gonna start getting together the baked feta part of this. Now you're probably wondering, AJ, feta isn't vegan, how are you gonna do it? Well, I came up with my own creative solution, we'll say last night, um, and I think it came out pretty good. So I'm gonna share that with you. So first thing you need is some cherry tomatoes. So we're gonna throw some cherry tomatoes in here. And really, you could throw other veggies in here if you wanted as well. Tomatoes is what it was made with originally. But yeah, so we've got these in here and we're gonna do kind of a lot. Like, don't be shy with these. I've got about six cups of these tomatoes. All right, so we've got our cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna put these off to the side. Let's grab a cutting board. And one of the things I'm learning in my culinary program is you always wanna put a towel down before you put the a cutting board because it helps prevent it from sliding. Now we're gonna put in two red bell peppers. You do not have to do that. You do whatever you want, but that is what I'm going to do. Now, if I was a little bit more patient, I would probably peel these, which is another thing I'm doing in my uh, culinary program, which is kind of a cool, like fancy thing that people like to do in these fancy restaurants. They don't like the peels. Now I'm not feeling it's particularly fancy today. And also the point of this is that it's kind of a quick like one pot meal. So why on earth would I spend a whole bunch of time peeling? Garbage bowl, tomatoes, we're doing it. All right, I got my pasta, my water boiling as well. So uh, we're just gonna cut out the middles of this, get rid of all the, the gross parts, the seeds. We'll do one at a time. We're just gonna cut right down the middle. And then any of this extra stuff that you see on here, we're just gonna slice it off. Don't want any of that pit. It doesn't super matter because it is gonna all kind of get cooked, but I don't like the, I mean, it doesn't taste good. Like, let's be real. I don't often do things that are trends, but this one was so good and I didn't want to make it. And you know, that's how you know something's gonna be good. Often my beautiful magical fairy wife, she'll come and she'll say, hey, AJ, can you make this? And she'll find me somebody else's recipe or some trend. And then it always ends up being really delicious. <laughs> so. I think the moral of the story is just do whatever my beautiful magical fairy wife says and things will come out okay. Now from here we're just going to take these red peppers and we're going to throw them in the cherry tomatoes. And like I said, I don't like, I have a bunch of leftover like zucchini and things, carrots, things like that. And I'm really excited to kind of throw those things in here because that becomes a way to reduce your own waste which I'm about, right? If I could use up all the food I buy and not be so American about everything I eat, that would be amazing. This is a pretty rustic, which rustic just means a lazy meal. Like that's all rustic means. All right, next we're grabbing some garlic. And I suppose you technically could chop up this garlic, but I kind of like the whole smashed garlic like vibe that it gives it. That's the great thing about this uh, recipe is that kind of do whatever your heart says and your heart knows like let's be honest your heart knows it's made some mistakes your heart's not perfect none of ours are but also it is so we've got this with the garlic and the peppers it's looking pretty delish if i say so myself which i do now we're gonna grab some spinach couple of handfuls now really you don't have to chop this but i'm going to all right so this is around two cups 
Um, if you're not used to eating this much veggies, don't be scared. It's going to wilt down drastically. Okay, so we're gonna take this. I mean, that's looking pretty good. Woo! Okay, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some just classic hummus. Some plain old pre-made hummus. By the way, if you wanna make your own hummus, which I'm sure this would be even better with, I has a recipe. Look, it's up in the corner. It's also in the description. Go watch that if you're into it. So all we're gonna do with this hummus now is we're just going to, let me get this cutting board out of here. All right, so we've got our base ready for this. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some classic plain old hummus and I'm just gonna throw it right on top. And like I said before, you could make this hummus and I do have a recipe for pre-made hummus. Feel free to do that, but that is a lot of extra steps. And I know the point of this is like a lazy meal and I was able to make dinner and like, I mean, it sat in the oven for a while, but the actual work was like 10 minutes. We're gonna wanna throw eight to 10 ounces of hummus right on top of there. See how beautiful that looks. All we're gonna do is top it with a little bit of seasoning. We're gonna do a little bit of salt, crushed red pepper, not too much, little bit of black pepper. And last but not least, we're gonna do some olive oil. Good amount of olive oil. If you don't like oil, because I know a lot of vegans don't like to be eaten oil, Good for you. You don't. You could just skip this and it will still cook. It's just gonna take a little longer. Come on, live a little. It's just a little oil. So this is looking glorious, beautiful, magnificent. This is going to go in the oven for about 35 minutes. And now you're probably wondering, AJ, I thought this was baked feta. Where's the feta? The feta we're gonna add near the end because uh, the vegan feta melts too quickly um, and it becomes kind of watery and that's not my experience. I watched another YouTuber use this exact same uh, <laughs> vegan cheese and it was not awesome. So what I found last night was I put the feta in at the end, kind of broke it up and mixed it and that way you kind of had some nice chunks in there. It was really good. Um, so, all right, so this is gonna go into an oven at 400 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes and then all we're gonna do is add the feta and the pasta and then this is good to go. Uh, we have our cherry tomatoes, bell peppers, hummus, spinach. I just added the uh, vegan feta. Now this is the thing I did that's different than some of the other uh, vegan recipes where they use the walla life because this stuff kind of melts into wateriness if you just throw it in there for 40 minutes. So we don't want that. We want chunks of ooey gooey delicious cheese. So I add it after, mix it all in and it makes nice little chunks and it slowly melts instead of uh, becoming a pool of feta. Nobody wants that. You don't want that, I don't want that. JD doesn't want that. Now that I have all this, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start breaking stuff up. The fun part, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the part that makes the TikTok go crazy. We also boiled up some bow ties and we'll throw this on as well. And this is proper form. I know I'm taking a course. <laughs> So this is, this is perfect form. Don't question it, don't Google. No, 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 no. I'm just right, just agree with me. America 2021, am I right? Is it too soon? Probably. And you're gonna see that the feta doesn't melt quite the same as normal cheese, but that's okay, because we want the chunks in there. And the hummus actually becomes the base of the sauce. And you might think, oh, I don't want hummus pasta. But you do, you actually do want hummus pasta. You just don't know it yet, because like I said, I didn't want this my beautiful magical fairy, um, I won't say made me, she strongly encouraged it. She was very uh, enthusiastic about me making this and I'm like, I don't know, TikTok recipes are usually overhyped and they usually are. This is not the case, this one is actually very good. All right, so beautiful magical fairy wife, why don't you come on over here? It's time, round two, game six. This is the second time we've made a pan of this in less than 24 hours. That's true, almost less than 12 hours. <laughs> That's how good it is. Yee. That's enough. That's a lot. Nope, it's not. <laughs> you want to show them? Look. Ah. <laughs> do you want a fork or are you going to eat um, it like yeah, um, with your hands or know. like a dog? There you go. Thank you. Yesterday's. Is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just as good? Better? Mm -hmm. The same? Mm-hmm. What does it taste Yesterday like? Yesterday I was really hungry. Mm-hmm. But today I'm not like starving and it still tastes just as good. Yep, and it's easy. 
It's mm -hmm. the easiest. It's like super savory and comforting. Mm hmm. <laughs> the vegan feta is awesome. It is. You wouldn't really know the difference. You wouldn't even necessarily know there's hummus in it either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just helps it become creamy and mm -hmm. it does. It makes it very cozy. There's a lot of snow here. There's a lot of snow. I'll, I'll grab some, some footage of this miserable winter tundra that we are experiencing. Actually, okay, other, it's not so bad. Yeah, other people have it worse. Never right. mind. Never mind. Don't be so basic, AJ. Yes. So, yeah, TikTok hack recipe. What are you giving it? A 10. A 10? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yep. What do you know? Her idea gets a 10. Okay, cool. Uh, anything else you want to say about it? Anything else you want to say about it? Definitely make it. Yeah. That's it. It's easy. Yeah. Awesome. And this one's vegan and gluten free, but I'm sure it would be good gluten full and, and not vegan. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah. Well, there it is. We did it. We made the famous baked feta, TikTok, whatever, uh, but we did it vegan. And I think it's better that way because it, you know, it's a, it, you can feel good about it. Not only is it cozy, but it's a plant-based meal. So uh, I honestly think this would be a good way to use up extra veggies, which I always have kind of like weird odds and ends that you could kind of just throw in here and make it into a nice creamy sauce. So if you try this recipe out, maybe uh, tag me at Rivera. You could tag me on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, do at me. Let me know if you're making this or comment down below what weird little tweak did you make on the uh, baked vegan feta thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, hey, good job. I'm really proud of you and I'm really thankful that you trusted me with your time and attention. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. If you're not done watching content, hey, I got more content probably popping up at the end of this video. Thank you again and go do something you can be proud of.